Hello everyone and thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Jordan, I'm a millennial investor, and in today's video we are going to be talking about Salesforce. Salesforce has been one of the largest positions in my portfolio, and then as of today it now is the largest position in my portfolio. You can see that it makes up about 55% of my portfolio as of this right now. I updated this before the video started and I just bought 100 more shares of the company. My portfolio value as of today is about 39,000 or so. And you can see that over the last year, we have done not so great. We've about kept up with the NASDAQ, slightly outperforming it. And we're doing better year to date in the last couple months. But mostly, the last couple of years, the biggest holding I've had is Amazon and Salesforce, and that still stays true today. Now, you see big, scary headlines like this that say, Salesforce stock falls as revenue outlook slashed amid $10 million buyback. Scary, right? Scary headlines, and you see the stock price going down. Let's go ahead and look at the stock price right now. Okay, 154 is the stock price today. If we look at the year chart, it's down 42%. So why am I buying this company as its stock continues to fall, as it continues to falter? Is this a dying stock? Is it a dying company? Well, we'll break that down in this video. If you haven't checked me out before, my name is Jordan. I'm a millennial investor. And in today's video, I like to disclose all my investments, including the two portfolios that I shared down below in the description, which is my growth portfolio and my dividend growth portfolio. This is down below in the description, which includes lots of other things like the auto savings accounts, credit card referrals, and lots of other stuff like that. If you haven't checked me out before, I'd appreciate if you subscribed and sign up down below and help support the channel, like the 125 people that I've signed up doing that so far. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing if you haven't already. And without further ado, let's get started. We have about 55% of my portfolio invested strictly in Salesforce. And when you see scary headlines like this, it makes you wonder, wow, the company is it in trouble. You see these bad headlines, you see the stock price falling. And going back to what I said here, the company was at a high of $311, and today it trades in the 150s. And I just bought another 100 shares at $152 a share, lowering my cost basis now down to 183 around this level right here. Now, let's talk about the most recent earnings report. A couple of big things to talk about here, and part of the reason why the company fell. They produced $7.7 .7 billion in revenue in the last quarter. And if you want to see this visualized in my little spreadsheet here, let's go to Salesforce. Let's increase the zoom to 125. And if you want to see the quarterly numbers in terms of the revenue growth, you can see them in these columns right here. This is breaking down category by category. And we'll talk more about that category growth in a second. But generally speaking, you can see that this company is typically growing well into the double digits. And that's expected to continue for the next several years. Now looking at this slide, you can see that they did keep their non-GAAP operating margin guidance. If we go back here, you can see that in my guidance, I wrote reaffirmed. And this little red letter right here, they did forecast 20.4%. They did keep that this quarter. And then going back to the slide, you can see the revenue guidance, which is now 31 billion. We'll talk about that next. But you can also see something that we've never seen before, which is a 10 million dollar share repurchase program. Let's hop over to Qualtrum here, and you can see that this company typically on an annual basis continually dilutes shareholders millions of shares every single year at a heavy and heavier pace. If we go to the quarterly numbers, you can see that after the acquisition of Slack from this big jump up, you can see that they're still diluting about five or six million shares every single quarter, which is not good. That's not a good thing, right? Now, this company is finally deciding to buy back shares, which means that dilution will be no more. If they are diluting, it'll be negative. My, my prediction is that as this company continues to produce record-free cash flow, I think that this will actually start doing negative. They'll be buying back quicker than they're diluting, and this number of 997 million shares outstanding will start to go down. We'll go to 990, to 980, 970, 950, whatever, okay? Now the guidance is what I wanted to talk about. The guidance of revenue is about 31 billion. Now this is what they produced last quarter. This is what they produced three months ago. And you notice that the full year 2023, or fiscal year 2023, I should say, guidance came in at about 31.7 to 31.8 million dollars. Now notice that today's numbers, which is this quarter, 
is only about 31 billion. That's about 0 0.7, 0 0.8 billion down from its previous estimates. Now, I did want to factor in that part of this come in from currency exchange, FX uh, headwinds, right? It was 600 million estimated. Now it's 800 million. So you need to factor in 2 million, or excuse me, 0.2 million into this revision downwards. So and when you factor in that it's really only went down 0 0.7 to 0 0.8, 0 0.2 of that comes from currency headwinds like the FX exchanges. Now, when you only think about this downturn in revenue guidance, it's only about two, two and a half percent down from what they were guiding a quarter ago. Now, in terms of their profitability, their non-GAAP earnings per share was originally estimated at 475. Now it's estimated at 472. Three pennies. Three whole pennies is what this company's profits, which is what I'm really interested in, went down. The company's operating margin of 20.4%, like we talked about earlier, was reaffirmed and kept the same, which is why the profitability is almost identical. Now, notice that if they didn't have this currency headwind, the growth would be even better. And they were forecasting 20% revenue growth, and now they're only forecasting 17% revenue growth. Obviously, when you take down your forecast, that's not a good thing, but 17% revenue growth is still very nice. I believe it would be 16.8 to be exact, if they hit those exact numbers. But this company is can continually growing each and every segment, from its sales segment, to its service segment, to its platform and other, its marketing and commerce, its data. And then I even wrote in my notes here, they talked about this in the earnings call. If we scroll to the very bottom and look at my notes, you can see that Slack grew 53% in the last physical quarter. 53%. So as you can see in their data category, which makes up Slack, which is this little logo right here where my mouse is, that is still growing 50 plus percent. But if you look year over year, quarter over quarter, regardless of which metric you look at, each and every single one of its segments is growing at a massive pace. Going over to Qualtrum and looking at the quarterly numbers, if you look at the revenue for the annual numbers, it looks impressive. When you look at it at a quarterly basis, it becomes even more impressive, just quarter after quarter, record after record, and that free cash flow on an annual basis during those two quarters when they rake it in is hitting record numbers after record numbers. And that while last year they did about five, 0.3-ish billion in free cash flow. This year, they're expected to do 6 billion plus. So that said, if you take today's market cap, the company right now is about a $150 million company, and they're gonna do around 6-ish billion in free cash flow. If you take 153 and you divide it by six, this company's current price to free cash flow is right at about a 25. Now, am I willing to pay a 25 price to forward free cash flow for a company that literally has one of the best modes in the market, in my opinion? The answer is yes. They have subscription revenue, they're defensive, they're growing double digits in the recession, and to think that they're still doing this well when the economy is shrinking really bodes well for how good I think this company is going to do good in the future. This is not financial advice, do your own research, but as I continually see this company fall, I just can't not take advantage of it. So now I own 200 shares of Amazon, I own 200 shares of Salesforce, my portfolio value like I showed is around 39,000 as of the time of this filming, and I'll continue to show my investments throughout the future. But thank you guys so much for watching on the way to the end. If you did watch to the end, I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribed if you haven't already. Check out all the stuff down below in the description. But other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.